We have an incumbent mayor who is a Republican. He was elected several years ago in the middle of the COVID crisis because our very left, far left assembly had just gone too far and had implemented mask mandates and school shutdowns and business shutdowns and city shutdowns. And Anchorage responded and said, no more shutdowns. And the most conservative candidate in a very flooded field of mayoral candidates was elected. And so he's been our incumbent the last three years. Now, he has had to deal with a legislature that has a supermajority and veto override power that is far left. So that's kind of been the balance in Anchorage. So we just had another election. And in this particular election, the far left candidate won. So the challenger won. So now we, we've just gone completely blue as a city. And of course, Anchorage is the largest city in Alaska. And this is a very interesting case study for the rest of the country because uh, there is a great effort, of course, to turn the West Coast into the left coast. And Alaska remains the only red-ish state on the west coast and so we are standing on the the front edge of the tide there trying to keep everything from the whole left the whole west coast from turning left but what really happened in this situation i think was a case study in voter turnout why didn't the voters come out to vote i don't believe that anchorage is actually more democrat than republican i do think that we are pretty on the fence but there's still more right-leaning voters and there are left-leaning voters. Otherwise, we wouldn't have had the result that we had during the COVID, um, the COVID pandemic for this mayor race. So what happened here? In this particular situation, in this runoff race, because neither of them got enough votes to actually win, so it went to a runoff, we had a 12% lower turnout than in the runoff race that this mayor had three years ago. So we had a significant voter drop-off than the last mayoral runoff race. I think that that's really telling for 2024 and interesting for people who are looking at the 2024 November race and what that could mean. We also had record low voter turnout in Alaska for the November 2022 race. So we are having a voter drop-off problem in Alaska. And we're all very concerned about voter suppression, I think, across the United States and in various forms. One of the ways that I think votes can get suppressed is by people choosing to not exercise their vote. Just choosing to not vote is a form of suppressing the vote. When the election is actually chosen by a very, very small minority of people making huge decisions for everybody else, that is a form of voter suppression. Because those people are, the the reasons those people are choosing not to vote is because you know, fill in the blank. They don't feel like their vote counts. They don't trust the system anymore. Um, You know, so interesting that you would mention that. After the 2022 election, we did a poll, and this is what we found of for people who didn't vote. So interesting things to consider for people. 73% of the people, this is statewide in Alaska, but still bears, uh, bears important information for everybody, I think, across the nation. 73% of the people who answered this poll did not vote. Absolutely verified. Here are some of the things that people said in this poll. of them did not vote because they lacked trust in the integrity of the elections or they were concerned about ranked choice voting in Alaska, which is a unique system that we have up here. Interestingly, that was split evenly between people registered as Republicans and Democrats that didn't lean one way or the other. That's a that's a huge find. Yeah, that's that was interesting to us. Fifty five percent said that ranked choice voting was more complex and affected their vote. 34% said the Dobbs decision that happened in 2022 affected their decision whether or not to vote. The Dobbs decision being the, the reversal of Roe v. Wade. The decision to put Roe v. Wade down to the from federal decision to the state. So every state gets to make its own decision about implementing Roe v. Wade. So we know that these large policy decisions across the United States actually do have an impact on whether people decide to vote or not. Like some, one of the things that we saw for my race is 5,000 right-leaning voters whose single issue that they vote on is pro-life issues. They did not vote, and they're, they're super voters. They did not vote in 2022. And potentially the reason is because they figured, the, well, the issue's over. We got Roe v. Wade overturned. In fact, Roe v. Wade's not overturned. Here in Alaska, you can abort a baby all the way up to it being delivered on the delivery table. 
And so Roe v. Wade is alive and active in Alaska. However, these 5,000 pro-life voters did not vote. And so they said the Dobbs decision affected their decision whether to vote. 55 percent, uh, or sorry, 34 percent. 28 percent said their frustration about Alaska election systems affected their decision to vote. And 22 percent said negative media coverage affected their decision to vote. So to your point, there are all kinds of reasons why people might decide to not vote. But these are some of the things that I know are affecting our significant voter drop off in Alaska that people are still scratching their heads about trying to figure out how to get people to vote. And it absolutely affected our outcome in 2022. It definitely affected the outcome of this mayor race because by all accounts, the incumbent had the advantage in this race and has more of a base in this race and could have been able to win had the voter turnout been there. And I am concerned, the reason I'm bringing this up, I am concerned that without planning, if we just think, well, there don't people are donating to Trump, people are donating to congressional candidates, there's a lot of passion on social media, but if we don't do the hard work of mobilizing the vote and making clear your vote matters, every vote matters, then we will actually forfeit races. And and then there goes the entire um, the entire point of doing all the work that we're doing. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's the work is important, but ultimately it's sealed by our vote. Absolutely. And by the additional votes that we get for the things that we're passionate about and the cause, the causes that we're passionate about. Uh, I and I can I think I can speak for both of us. We don't want to see voter suppression on either side, right? It's cons- That's it's, as, it's as concerning to me to see that there was a drop off in uh, people voting on the Democrat side as it was on the Republican side because um, I know this is probably not popular to say in these days, but uh, we need to have a a system with more than just one party rule. <laughs> That's how we balance things out. It's 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 another form of uh, of of balancing political power and making sure that uh, different ideas that are, are are considered and the best ideas rise to the service and the candidates with the best ideas rise to the service. We don't want a one party system. Uh, we have a one party system here in in Anchorage, um, and that is not a good thing. And we don't want a one party system to happen at the federal level because we've seen uh, what's happened when. Uh, the Biden administration and the leftists who control it have had uh, essentially uh, un, unfettered uh, authority and power to do whatever they wanted. I mean, they've been pretty brazen in completely ignoring the Constitution on, on so many issues. Absolutely. Um, and uh, unfortunately, the the folks in, uh, in power in our in our city, right not right now, but who are coming into power, I'm I'm concerned. Uh, we're going to be seeing some more violations of people's constitutional constitutional rights, like we saw with COVID. They did not hesitate to to violate people's constitutional rights and their ability to to just live to survive. We had uh, we had one restaurant here in town that that um, got fines uh, from the city and the could, fines. yeah, because they they were refusing to shut down. Because guess what? People still needed to eat and. People still needed to to live. Their businesses still needed to. Uh, the businesses were their sole source of income, right? And and now we know after all of that that these draconian um, lockdowns were unnecessary and incredibly destructive. And I would say, at the end of the day, not to get totally off topic, but uh, this is what happens when um, you don't have d- voices listening to each other in a balanced dialogue on these things. Um, it was pretty clear to many of us that these these policy decisions weren't only unconstitutional and violating people's constitutional rights. They weren't going to get the you know purported results, and um, and so this is why we want to have people on both sides voting um, and people engaged in a positive way, not in a destructive way, in a positive way, uh, so that we can get back to the regular order of business here in America. I would also add, as someone who has reviewed the election system in Alaska, so there's not a lot of people who can go around and say they've done an audit or review of a statewide election system. The concerns about election integrity are understandable, but we can't wait for an election system to be pure and flawless before we vote. 
I think every election system is going to have some issues with it because every election system has humans at the at the root of it. And so we need to shore up and build some protections and guards around the election system as much as we can. But we don't say, I'm not going to participate or not vote because there might be some flaws or vulnerabilities around a system. That's just, you know, what if you said that about your bank? <laughs> You're just not going to do any banking transactions because there could be some vulnerabilities. And instead, we need to participate and to vote. And also what I've seen is that a lot of these vulnerabilities can absolutely be, if you will, overridden or um, snowed over by voter turnout. A light turnout makes it a lot easier for bumps in the system to be felt and to be noticed in an election. But a huge turnout makes it much, much harder for people to mess with or for errors in the system to come to the surface and actually affect the outcome of an election. And so really, I think one of the antidotes until you get to the kind of system where you have a lot of confidence and trust in it, one of the antidotes to it is voter turnout. So if you're one of the people who's like, I don't trust the system, good, go vote. That's exactly what you need to do because your vote is part of what insulates the system from its vulnerabilities. 